How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, and Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is a new week. It is Monday here on the show. You know what that means? Tonight, Monday Night Raw. We got a lot of matches announced for the show. We got three weeks until WrestleMania. And we've actually got a bunch of matches signed for WrestleMania. And we'll get closer tonight as we've got a number of qualifying matches for the WrestleMania 40 Tag Team Title Ladder Match. So we'll tell you about that. We got NXT tomorrow. We got another big dynamite coming up on Wednesday. This is the show in Toronto with Christian versus Adam Copeland in an I Quit match for the TNT title and the Continental title also on the line. Continental crown's being broken up. Looks like we got a match here for this belt. Ring of Honor pay-per-view. We have another match for the Ring of Honor title. So uh, more belts being added to AEW, it's looking like. I suppose it's possible Eddie wins all these matches and they keep them together, but my guess is probably not. We have a Rampage lineup. Why? Well, because Rampage is taking place immediately after Dynamite. So if you're a fan of three-hour Raw shows... You're going to get a three-hour Dynamite show, essentially. Although they will be split into two shows. And so I think that the main stuff is going to happen in the first two hours, and the rest will happen in the second hour. And, of course, we've got all of the updates. Mark Coleman was out of the hospital, went back to the hospital, is out of the hospital again. Becky Lynch was at the White House this past weekend. A uh, documentary coming on Bray Wyatt. Asuka, potential injury, perhaps Bailey as well. Both from SmackDown on Friday. The Rock does a lot of cursing. I'll tell you about that and plenty more. Back in a moment to kick it off. Observer Live. Tony Storm, joined by Mariah May and Luther. The panic is over. I'm here. Hello, beautiful. Hello, it's great to see you. Mr. Khan. Great to see you, I'm getting all tangled. I can't do this. Luther. You're right. I'm stuck. This is great. It's perfect. Nothing. Fantastic. Totally. I know. It is so nice to see you. It's great to see you, know. champ. So proud of you. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. I can't remember the reason why, but I am. Thank you. Yes. Congratulations. You know what? We should start these a little later and go on even longer. Oh. And that way we can all have breakfast. <laughs> That's great. Mean? Sounds great. I have an 8 a.m. in Palm Beach, so I'm gonna. It's gonna be a long one, but we're good. Tony Storm, congratulations on retaining your title tonight. How, how are you feeling after this match with Deanna Perrazzo? Shit, Renee, if you must know. But let's get to the important business. So, since all your questions often amount often amount to a fair amount of yellow communist journalism, I've prepared a statement of my own. That way, you won't have to announce which website. You work for us like a point of pride, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Good evening. I am still your AEW Women's World Champion. But I couldn't have done it without the following people. Thank you to the city of Greensboro for keeping the riffraff out of the hotel lobby. Best wishes and happy retirement to Sting. Seems like just yesterday we started on this journey together. Feel free to use my summer house in Martha's Vineyard. <clears throat> I would like to thank my protege, Mariah May, for capturing the unpolished beauty of my youth. I see something in you. I don't know what it is, but I do. I am giving you full access to my old storage unit. Help yourself. <laughs> Ah, uh, of course, uh, to my trusted servant, servant Luther. Yes, um, I'll have a salmon nori roll, carbonated water, and Pepto Bismol. Right chop, away, chop. Madame. Thank you, dear. <sighs> Thank you to official Aubrey Edwards for making the right decision. But next time, please wear milder perfume, if you could. I have a bit of a headache. I would like to thank the commentators, Mr. Tasmaniac and Sean Excalibur Mooney, for their usual East Coast, West Coast analytical banter. Ah, and the utmost respect for my opponent and former friend, Diana Perrazzo. A great showing. A great showing. You took me to the limit. 
you brought out the best in me and blah, 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 blah. I hope you go back to impact. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, my arms are killing me. I don't know how I'm going to do my usual debauchery tonight. I am going to have to open that gift bag that Karen Jarrett got for me. If you understand what I mean. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. We'll start with the good news. Mark Coleman has not only been released from the hospital, but he has wasted no time returning to the gym. For those of you that uh, somehow don't know the story, and I don't think there is anyone who doesn't know the story, because even my wife heard about this story, and she doesn't follow wrestling or MMA at all. He was at his parents' house, brought his dog Hammer over, and at 4 o'clock in the morning, old Hammer started barking. And Mark Coleman woke up and the house was on fire. And so he rushed and got his father out of the house. Rushed back into the burning house, got his mother out of the house. Rushed back into the burning house to save Hammer, who was a, also a hero. I won't say he's the real hero because Mark Coleman rushed back into a house three times. But Hammer is the one that alerted him. And, uh, and Hammer didn't make it. The roof collapsed. Everybody showed up. They got Coleman out of there. He was covered in suit, smoke inhalation, and uh, they took him to the hospital. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad, but uh, he recovered. And it was only a couple of days later that he had recovered enough that they released him from the hospital, and he went home, and when he was home... Well, my arms don't feel good. Chest doesn't feel good. I'm not feeling right. Went back to the hospital. They discovered he had pneumonia. And so he was in the hospital all weekend. And now he is out of the hospital again and back in the gym. This man will not stop. Hey, you got to build those lungs back up. What a story. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. They mentioned this on Collision on Saturday night. And uh, I don't know if WWE's mentioned it yet. I don't think they have. But I wouldn't be surprised if they if they did. And, uh, man, they what should. a story. They absolutely should. It's going to be interesting, too, with The Rock, even though they are separate entities, with The Rock doing this mo movie on Mark Kerr. Obviously, there's a cross-section or a cross between Mark Kerr and Mark Coleman. That's what the Smashing Machine, you see that in the documentary there. So... Obviously, Shayna Baszler working with Josh Barnett, you know, and on the blood sport thing. And I, I wonder if we're going to see a door open up for maybe some of those older guys who The Rock is, I would assume, going to lean on a little bit to do this movie. Because, unfortunately, there are some that are not around right now, but there are men like Mark Holman and Don Fry and, and some others that they would really make interesting additions to the movie. The Rock as Mark Kerr. Can you believe it? No. <laughs> it, it is wild. Although I, I will say this, he's a little, little taller than Mark Kerr, but certainly as pumped up as both of them were ever in their primes, that's for sure. You know, it was suggested here that uh, he should get the uh, the Warrior Award at the Absolutely. Hall of Fame. Gas the thing, the thing with the Warrior Award is, I don't even know what the hell this thing even means anymore. Oh, well, yeah. Because first true. off, it's named after the Warrior and uh, that that's an issue right there. But second off, I mean, whatever you want to say about the Warrior, and there is plenty to say, the Warrior's actual idea for this award was every year some anonymous person in WWE that none of you have ever heard of, but who without such we couldn't even do this show every week, they should be given the Warrior Award. That was his idea. And uh, that's certainly not what it became. I got no problem with, you know, whatever they want to do, whoever they want to honor and everything. But that was the Warriors' original idea. And that certainly would not be Mark Coleman. It would not. But no. if you're talking about, hey, let's recognize somebody who's a hero, who's a warrior. I mean, they should they should call this the Coleman Award. That's what they should, even though he's never worked for WWE. But, uh, 
Anyway, guy's a hero. Hammer's a hero. And uh, that's a, a rare, great, great story in pro wrestling. And here's another one. Brought this up yesterday. Never again in history. Never before and never again. Will a WWE superstar appear at the White House on Sunday, taking photographs with the President of the United States, putting her book in the Presidential Library, and then flying to Monday Night Raw to wrestle Nia Jax in a Last Woman Standing match? Golly, what a weekend. You couldn't write something like this. There's so many things. I've just been thinking about this over the past couple of days. There's so many things that, like, if you would have predicted this in the prediction contest, it would have been just <laughs> laughable. Imagine someone calling in and going, Becky Lynch is going to appear at the White House, pose for photographs with President Biden to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, and then she will fly to Raw and wrestle Nia Jax in a last woman standing match. If you would have predicted that on the first week of January, people would have been, what in the name of God are you even talking about? But hey, here we are. And there's a lot of them. Somebody had another one the other day, if I can find it here. Stephanie Vacair and the ambassador to Chile. And then the ambassador to Chile getting played out by social media for not dressing up for the occasion. There was that one that probably flew under the radar for most people. Yeah, man, I wish I could find this. This was another one. It's just so crazy. So crazy, all of the stuff that's happened this year. And then we go back. Literally, you know, you know what's amazing? You know what's amazing? What? All of this stuff that's happened this year that's just like, it's completely, completely outlandish. And meanwhile, I believe the current winner of the prediction contest is the person who bravely predicted that we might get two women's segments on one show. One AEW show. That guy's the winner right now. Do you realize that? Somebody predicted there would be two women's segments on on AEW shows. And that guy is currently the winner. (laughs) Whatever. Whatever. How did he even get that in past the... uh past the censors there that that's not a bold prediction is it well i mean yeah (laughs) apparently it was (laughs) apparently it was we've got a documentary on bray wyatt which will be premiering in two weeks bray wyatt becoming immortal monday april 1st it will be narrated by the undertaker they've got interviews with triple h john cena becky lynch hulk hogan Braun Strowman. Interviews with Bo Dallas, his brother, sister Mika Rotunda, his fiance, uh, Josanne Offerman. What was her? What was her? Uh, Jojo. Jojo. That's right. That's right. That threw me off. Passed away, thirty-six year old. Uh, thirty-six years old, August twenty-four, twenty twenty-three, due to a heart issue, and uh, that's going to be coming up. I guess that would be uh, the week of WrestleMania. Because we have the SmackDown Hall of Fame ceremony on April 5th. And he will not apparently be going into the Hall of Fame this year. A lot of people thought it was going to take place. Apparently it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And I don't know what that means. Maybe they maybe they want him to be a headliner one year. Uh, maybe they want it to be in, in uh, coordination with something else. I don't know. But he's going in maybe probably pretty the, soon. the circumstances, too. Maybe there are people that are not exactly ready for that yet. And you are bringing the entire family in because of Barry Windham and Mike Rotundo being inducted in as the U.S. Express. And obviously, they're putting this documentary out. So this may be just helping to lay the groundwork for him to go in next year because it's almost impossible for me to believe that he will not be inducted into the Hall of Fame at some point here. And unless they're going to do two a year and possibly announce one during SummerSlam or something like that, you know, next year probably would be the time. Sandman says, I thought the prediction was that two women's matches would be on Dynamite. One would be advertised and the other would not be advertised. See, this is going to be kind of difficult because uh, what does that mean by advertised? Like if they go on the air only having advertised three matches, but then what if they advertise it when the show starts? Does that count? I feel like that may have happened already. 
And as far as people saying the prediction's not bold enough, well, if it's the only one that came true, it's the winner. I don't think we have anything else that came true so far that people have predicted. I don't know. I got close and got a plaque out of the deal. I know Tara did as well, too. It's only March. Did you get a plaque? Which was yours? I do. It's over here. I'll get get it during the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Corey Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Um, I do want to talk about uh, the main event tonight with uh, Sting's final match. And I just wanted to kind of just get your thoughts on Sting's retirement. Obviously, you had a feud with him in, in TNA uh, over the TNA World Title. Had a couple great, ma- you know, great matches with him, and just kind of reflect a little bit about your history with Sting and what he means to this business and this company. You know, I've I've I've, I've known Sting as a rival, as a friend. Uh, you know, outside the ring as a confidant, somebody who has uh, been a steady and, and, and sobering voice during a lot of chaotic situations throughout my career. Uh, aside from that, for 40 years, Sting has elicited emotions from crowds around the world that uh, you know uh, uh, most wrestlers could only hope they would achieve. And I think that uh, you know tonight, how much love he received, how many people showed out for his final appearance, and uh, you know how much we here at AEW appreciate his contributions to this company. Um, to be a man like Sting, to have the legacy and the, and the legendary status that you do and still show up here and give that 110% and still try to build a new company and still give of himself physically and mentally at a very high level. Um, you know, it, it, it speaks to his character, it speaks to who he is as a human being, and it speaks to the legacy that he deserves to be celebrated tonight. Two more questions? Uh, Scott Fishman, TV Insider. Um, you know, you being the AEW World Champion, you're seen as the leader, like a face of the company. What are your, what's, how would you kind of describe uh, the vibe right now backstage in the locker room and the working relationship that you all have? Um, it's been a turbulent couple months last year, but it seems like things are a little steady right now. So kind of how would you kind of describe the feeling that you have backstage? I, I think you summed it up perfectly. That was last year. I mean, this is the AEW underneath my reign. And... Uh, I, I, as far as uh, our, our locker room committee and stuff, I don't think it's ever been tighter. I don't think it's ever been better. Uh, there's a enthusiasm backstage that is infectious, and it's because you know we have so much new uh, burgeoning talent. We have so many new opportunities to go out there and entertain the crowd with the people that we have uh, at our disposal. That um, you know, there's just there's just genuine excitement among the locker room, and uh, you know, I, I think. Uh, it's been a long time since uh, uh, the, this spirit has been felt here, and uh, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to uh, you know where this leads us in the future. Last question for Joe. All right, cowards, cool. All right, I'm good. <laughs> Samoa Joe, our AEW World Champion, everybody. Thank you so much for your time, Joe. The show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Yesterday, I was disgusted. Oh, here's your plaque? Yeah, remember this? 2020. 2020. Yeah. Wow. Everyone's plaque is different. That's a nice plaque. I still I like just... my giant platinum ring I gifted myself for 2021 so you won in 2020 and i won in 2021 mm-hmm. that's 2021 crazy. you're exactly right it's almost like it's a gimmick but it's not <laughs> we're just wildly intelligent exactly now just like i'm gonna fight out intelligent you are the show okay. i'm gonna fight out telling because Vinny, Vinny likes to claim he's mensa qualified yeah, and this idiot right? didn't watch that rock promo in the gym <laughs> did you watch it the rock promo in the yes the one from last week in the gym? The yes, one the from one Friday? Eight minutes long. Yes, All I was right. stunned that it was so short compared to some of the other ones he's done. Set up Friday night, though, perfectly now, didn't it? 
Said he was going to talk about his mama. The boy talked about the man's mama. He did. Call him a crybaby. His promo and was so unbelievable that when it was over, I, I just wanted to tell Dave. Who is John ja Morant? That's you, what you asked him. You must rename the category. You must rename best on interviews. The, 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 it needs to be named after The Rock. The Dwayne Johnson Award? He's the greatest there's ever been. My God. Yeah. Yeah, he is. And you know, there's actually a there's actually a potential problem, okay? Sad. And that is that he literally is, like, outshining everybody. Everybody. And not just, like, you know, he's a little better than everybody, but, I mean, there's nobody close. And, you know, people talk about Cody and Seth and everything, but the the one that's really suffering right now is Roman because he has to stand in the ring with this guy. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God. Hey. Oh, my Lord. Biggest star in Hollywood for a reason, you know? See, we Michael. Knew this back in the day. Michael here says it exposes the current guys. That's actually not true. It exposes everybody else in the whole history of wrestling. A, yeah, like, this isn't a modern guy's yeah. thing. I mean, God. This guy is levels above everybody. And it's not just like what he says, but his star power, his presence, his, I mean, it's well, like. You cannot teach height or charisma. And that dude has got both, but especially charisma to spare for weeks and years and decades and centuries. Again, that's why the guy's as big outside of wrestling as he ever was inside of it. So. There is nothing you can do, and I know it's become kind of a talking point. Is he is he bigfooting everything here? And that was Tom and I talked about that on Friday. It's just going to be the way it is. What's interesting for Roman is at some point, Rock and Roman are going to have their split. And to me, the Rock is going to obviously be the babyface in that exchange. It's going to be interesting to see how Roman gets a lot of his man back, a lot of his power back against The Rock and puts one on The Rock. That's going to be interesting because The Rock has shown zero, I mean, zero weakness whatsoever when it comes to Seth and talking about Cody. Obviously, that's probably going to lead somewhere. It's going to be interesting how he plays it going up against Roman, who, again, he's going to want to be an equal in their battle over who's the actual head of the table. You know, I was thinking about this. What are they going to do at WrestleMania, WrestleMania weekend? We know one thing for sure, okay? We know one thing for sure. Cody is winning because they did add the stip that if Cody doesn't win, he can never challenge for the WWE title again. And they're not doing the same thing they did in AEW. I mean, they're doing everything except telling you, pay your money, buy your ticket, Cody's winning the title Sunday. But what are we doing Saturday? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Are we really going to have bloodline rules on Sunday where they can, and I quote, and I quote, do anything they want? I'm begging they don't do that because even though Cody will overcome all the odds and everything, I mean, it's just one of those things that you just can't get past all the logic holes that will inherently be there. They can do whatever they want. Well, why don't they rule that Cody can only win if he gets a pinfall on the moon? I mean, you can't you can't have a thing where the heels can do whatever they want, but a portion of that is, well, you know, if you pin Roman, you win or whatever. Why wouldn't they say, bloodline rules, uh, Cody needs to win by 40 count? I mean, it's just stupid. So I was thinking about this. Rock is going in hard on old Cody and his mother. And obviously, this is all, you know, the big picture is Rock and Roman Reigns. Rock is the is the baby face. I still believe that, uh, I don't know, we'll see. What I think is going to happen, honestly, I was thinking about this on Friday, I think Cody is pinning the Rock. I think Cody is going to pin the Rock. And I think it's going to be a fair fight on Sunday. I know everyone's expecting bloodline rules. But, man, I watched Rock go all in on Cody and his mother and the whole nine yards. And I thought, Cody is going to pin this guy. Because you know what? I think that when they do the Rock and Roman Reigns, 
the uh, for the head of the table, well, there's not going to be a title on the line. I think Rock is going to beat Roman Reigns. Bro, Roman Reigns has been the top guy for a decade. Rock doesn't, he doesn't need to be made. How's it, I mean, honestly, how's it help Roman Reigns to beat The Rock? He says he beat The Rock. What, he's going to be a main eventer after that? He's been the, the top guy for a decade. If you're going to do The Rock's retirement match as a babyface against, it's exactly like Sting. It's exactly like the Sting thing. Why does The Rock need to do a job in his last match to Roman Reigns? Did it hurt the Young Bucks to put over Sting in his final match? Of course not. Not one single solitary bit. Everybody loved it. They were all happy. You do a WrestleMania, Babyface Rock versus Roman Reigns. Who's the real head of the table? Rock beats the guy clean. Everybody's happy. So if Rock's beating Roman, he can put somebody over. He can put over Cody the night before Cody beats Roman Reigns. And if you want to get Cody over as your top guy, he beats The Rock and Roman Reigns on back-to-back nights. Just like they did, although it was for, you know, it was a little bit different back then, but remember Jericho when he beat The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, one after the other for that uh, undisputed title? When he had Stephanie's dog. Yeah. Jericho, he beat them both. So, uh... Oh, that was after that. That was was the Mania match with Hunter after he'd won the titles, but yeah. Hey, well, look, you you have to kind of do that to me because you don't want to beat Roman before Sunday. I mean, I guess you could have Cody get a win over him on Sunday, but to me that kind of defeats the purpose. No, I want to to make sure I didn't screw this up because people are asking. The Rock is the baby face. Roman is the heel. I saw it on the board yesterday as well. Like, you know, how are we going to do this with The Rock as the heel and Roman? Roman is not going to be the baby face. The Rock is going to be the baby face. I want to make that clear. Even if they wanted to do it that way, the people are not going to let them do that. It's just, it's impossible. It's impossible. You see it with The Rock now. He could he could say anything he wanted to about Cody, his mother, Dusty, Black Jack Mulligan. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter who it is. Dick Murdoch, Insult Rhodes' everything. It does not matter. He's going to get cheered. So that's the dynamic you want. Plus, let's look at this thing honestly after wrestlemania we could see roman disappear for a while go on a vacation for a little bit so okay now my question is what happens with solo sokoa that's going to be to me one of the most interesting pieces of the story as we come out of wrestlemania what's also interesting is what are they going to do with seth rollins is that title match going to take place on saturday is the rock going to you know again is he going to make a decree that rollins is going to have his title defense and then we're going to close the show does it take place to open up sunday that's going to be interesting to see where they decide to go ahead and place that match and if they give him a win or not i would put the title on drew mcintyre and then have damian priest you know remind drew come that wrestlemania monday that hey you know i still have this briefcase but we'll see I think that uh, I think that the tag match closes WrestleMania. Oh yeah, well that's what closes night one, I would think, and then night yes. two is obviously going to be closed by Cody and The Rock. Yes. Yes. So do you open up Sunday? Would you open up Sunday with Drew and Seth? I don't know about any of that. I'm just looking at the last match, and I know people have gotten mad. Like, how could you do that to Bailey? Listen, there's there's no rule that the women have to headline one night. Okay. If the women have the hottest program in all of WWE, which, by the way, has happened when Becky was was uh, literally the top star in the company in 2018, 2019, then you can you can main event with whatever match that they have. But I can't imagine anybody, including every single solitary woman in that company, Bailey, Becky, everybody, trying to argue that their match is bigger than a match involving The Rock or the Roman Reigns-Cody match. Those are the two matches that are anchoring this wrestlemania and i think they should go on last both nights and it's gonna take time but i as soon as next year we could see a second night of wrestlemania close with a women's title match very simply if you build it up right you have Rhea and bianca by the time next wrestlemania rolls around if charlotte flair's in a good position you could do charlotte against bianca or Rhea. There's different things that they have going on where, yeah, it's not going to happen this year because The Rock is there, but it can very easily happen next year. When we come back, we'll talk about a little bit of SmackDown and Collision and also 
The double standard involving Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> which is an article on the front page by Dave. Which is something that's happening, but we'll talk about that after the break. Observer Live. Hey there, Joe. Rick Uccino, CagesideSeats.com. Congratulations on a great performance tonight. Just uh, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, your new number one contender uh, in Wardlow and the words he had this week where he said he was coming for your spot. Yeah, uh, and, and much like everybody else in this in this entire roster, I mean, it's no it's no surprise Wardlow finds himself where he is. Obviously, a very domineering individual that has had tremendous success, admittedly even against me. But uh, right now, this is a very different version of myself. This is not one that is distracted by other championship titles. I'm the AEW World Champion, and Wardlow will, look, will, will soon learn why that is. Hey, Joe, uh, DJ Danny Ocean, 101.9 KISS FM. Um, you mentioned Will Ospreay. We talked about Wardlow. Uh, is there any of these new up-and-coming guys or you got your eye that you want to get in the ring with yourself that you want to defend your title against? You know, once again, I, I refer back to championship protocol. I mean, they have to earn this spot. I mean, this is not me up here picking out dream matches, trying to be nice about this. No, this is me uh, supporting the integrity of the championship that only the best grapplers in the world will compete for. So, uh, you know, is, is there a, a laundry list of wrestlers I'd be more than happy to take on in the ring? Yeah, every single one of them. And you look up and down our roster, you tell me one person that isn't a dream match. I know what this company is capable of. I know about the competitors in this company. And I am more than happy to prove each and every one of them that they're second tier and they're just not on my level. Hey, Joe, uh, Swerve made light of the uh, announcing in a poncho situation. Was mm -hmm. there ever a time in your life that you doubted that you would be back here where you are in this position? No, because obviously I was planning and taking the time to recover so that I could be back here at this capacity competing at this level. You know, far too, too many uh, uh, dumber athletes in this industry uh, don't take the time to heal. You know, don't bet on themselves and say, hey, listen, I'm going to step away from, from things a little bit and I'm going to come back um, uh, not 90 percent, not 80 percent, 110 percent. And I took that time and I came back 110 percent. Now I'm AEW world champion. So, I mean, th this is just indicative of me understanding what I need to do to get things done. You know, I'm, I'm playing this on a very different level than everybody else. Everybody else out here just hoping they get their shot, hoping they're doing things. I'm planning dynasties. And I mean, it starts with it starts with me. And that's not going to change anytime soon. Bro. I mean, they're they're playing chess. Uh, they're they're playing checkers. I'm out here playing chess. I mean, this is it's a totally different game, man. And uh, you know that, that that time. I mean, she, doing commentary and ponchos. I I'm still a millionaire. You know, I know what he's talking about. You know, so I mean, he he may not like that issue, but hey, that that guy on the poncho just whipped his ass tonight and is still world champion. So I mean, you, you tell me, you tell me who's running things around here. Apparently there has been discussion that there is a double standard regarding The Rock. You know, everyone else is told, including a memo sent by Nick Khan, don't swear, don't swear on TV, don't swear on social media. I've been suspended from here for the same thing, and you're just dropping F-bombs everywhere with well, your buddy Tony Khan. Come well, on. hold on a second. There's, there's a difference, and that is that I, I've done it on accident, and you do it on purpose. Two completely different things. You're such a... But the point is, Rock is not doing this on accident. He's doing it on purpose. And is this a double standard? <laughs> it's like, well, of course. Nah. <laughs> Do I care? No. The other thing is, I actually normally, like, 99% of the time, I, I do, like, think double standards are kind of ridiculous. 
Yeah, but, it's a double standard. <laughs> but not in this case. Not no. in this case. No, this guy can say whatever he wants. This is not Lawrence Taylor banging out rails of coke, you know, while some, like, walk-on rookie who were to do it, you know, would get cut, you know, or something like that. This is The Rock. And apparently, from what Dave said, in the way that the edits went on Friday, they are submitting this in full to Fox anyway, so they are dotting I's and crossing T's and making sure that all of this stuff is beeped out or muted out even if he is saying it noted here that one of the times i dropped an f-bomb i was ranting on austin theory one of the times yeah <laughs> oh austin theory too you wasted an f-bomb on austin theory i didn't waste it i didn't waste it you know uh speaking of austin theory yeah that bump <laughs> i feel bad for the guy well. because he's he's taken some awesome bumps over the last month and they had a great idea for another one, and unfortunately they mistimed it, so it looked completely ridiculous. But <laughs> what they what they tried to do was Kevin Owens would give him a stunner, and he would he would bounce up into an RKO. But I don't know what happened. He like forgot to jump at first. He takes the stunner and just stands there, and then there's like a pause, and then he jumps as high as he can in the air, and it, it eats the RKO. And like it was just. <laughs> I'm sure he was probably so angry in the back. He was probably kicking himself <laughs> that he did that. But uh, but if you're going to do it, make it uh, make it look like that so it's a true Botchamania moment. There was one of those on, I think it was Collision or Dynamite, a couple of, I think it may have been Collision because it may have been Bear Country or the Iron Savages or whatever a couple of weeks ago where there was a spot and then he, I don't know what he was supposed to do, but he just vaulted himself over the ropes, like took two steps and then like, threw himself over the rope so oh yes you know. the bear yeah yeah that one was all over the internet did people put this one all over the internet and make fun of it like they do with aw Pro you know what probably not because everything that i saw on the internet on friday had everything to do with the rocks promo at the beginning of the show well yeah austin theory should think the rock you know um it's not such a big deal with like mjf because he's already been world champion and top star in the company but uh, he did just turn 28 he's almost 30 He's he's 28 years old now, and remember Austin Theory like for a while, he just came out and he would always I'm 20 24 years old or whatever it was always this or that. This guy's 27 this summer already, and I was thinking about Nick Wayne. It's driving me crazy about Nick Wayne because you know they they hired Nick Wayne at 16 when he was 16, and like for two years it was just. Man, that guy. The day he turns 18, he's gonna be on AW television. Strap the rocket to that kid. Bro, kid's almost 19, and uh, he's he's just standing around. And I was just thinking about that watching AEW the other day. So many of these young guys and young women, although I guess Julia Hart's getting a pretty good push, but, you know, all of these these younger, and, you know, there's, there's Roxanne Perez, 22, you know. Thea Hale was 18. They had a chance to have an 18-year-old champion, but uh, they didn't. She's going to be 20 here soon. And it's just like, Man, what's the point of signing all these young people and just having them do nothing until they're old? <laughs> it's just, I don't get it, man. I don't get it, but whatever. I mean, what position is Austin Theory in right now? He's in a he's in a geek tag team with uh, Grayson Waller. I like Grayson Waller, but, I mean, he's in a geek tag team. And, you know, they're just doing whatever. And they're probably going to do a split, and then they'll do a few. That'll be six months. Theory's going to be... You know, 28 before too long, 27, 28. I mean, if you like the guy, if you think that he should be pushed harder, the hell are we waiting for? What are we waiting for with Nick Wayne? What are we waiting for with, you know, Hook and, and, uh, yeah. I don't know. Because you're paying a lot of big names, a lot of big money, and then you get a lot of people that want to do things or don't want to do things or feel as though that they are helping out all of the young talent even though people from the outside would look and go, I don't know if you've done that all so much. And that could actually mean a couple of different people instead of just one. But, I, you know, New Japan's got this same issue. In fact, it's even worse for them, you know, when you look up and down their roster that they have there, you know. And are they going to take advantage of the young guys they do have? They've let a lot just twist in the wind. You know, it's amazing watching just because he had a really, really – good match because he always has good matches el Fantasmo during the the g1 it's amazing or not during the new japan cup it's amazing how old he is compared to what you would think he is he's 37 years old i think 
you know, it's amazing. It's like, take advantage of this guy before it's too late. Take advantage of a guy like Jeff Cobb there before it's too late. And, you know, they don't seem to. And it's just, it's a frustrating thing to see happen. Whereas other promotions like in All Japan, they have to push their young guys because they don't have any other choice. Well, let's talk about the highs and lows of uh, both of these weekend shows. So the highs of SmackDown were this rock promo and and uh, rock concert at the beginning he basically did a PG version of the promo he cut in the gym. He's going to whip Cody in front of his mama. And when that belt is covered in blood and whatever else, You're in- that's the belt that he's going to hand to Michelle. Not Cody handing her the world title. And Brian, what's he going to say when he does it? He was sing it. unbelievable. I'm not going to sing, sing it. it. Stop. You know they're doing a live action remake of Moana with The Rock? Get out of here. No, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? That sounds is amazing. He, what is he? Hopefully he's doing it concurrently as he films the Mark Kerr movie. May as well. I, I would imagine I just, you know, hopefully he like slips in and out during the Moana thing. It would be amazing. LWO versus Angel and Umberto was a, was a good match, which uh, uh, Angel and Umberto won. <laughs> Remember a long time... Eh, never mind. I don't have enough yeah, time. Yeah, because give me a rant on tag teams. Uh, Randy Orton and Grayson Waller, I enjoyed immensely. Because Randy Orton is so great. <laughs> he's, he's the best guy there's ever been at doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> I've never seen someone do nothing in a more entertaining way yes, than, than Randy an Orton. for him. <laughs> and the uh, RKO and the somersault stunner was awesome. And then the stuff he did afterwards. They set up Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton for WrestleMania. And then uh, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn beating pretty deadly. That was pretty good. And yeah. uh, and then Bailey and Dakota Kai. This actually was not good because Asuka may have suffered a knee injury, and then Bailey got her face landed on on a moonsault. And I haven't really heard much of an update on either, other than Asuka didn't work weekend shows. But man, I hope Bailey's okay. Can you imagine losing the WrestleMania spot because you got a concussion? Three weeks before Mania, when uh, EO accidentally moonsaulted onto her head. I'm just happy it wasn't a crushed orbital bone. You know, they were. We holding... don't know. That's the... Actually, we don't know. Well, I guess we don't know because there's been no update. But for those people who didn't see it, damage control held Bailey and were holding her arms and legs, holding her up. And EO went up, and I guess they were rushed for time because she just ran up there and flipped back and landed right on Bailey's face as, as she was coming down. So, and I don't know what happened during uh, Oscar. I saw she was, did some stuff outside the ring. And then I don't, I guess it was during when I don't know where it was, attack, but she started limping really badly. And obviously it was something because she didn't work those house shows this weekend. So we got uh, the lineup for next week's SmackDown. Um, I actually don't have it in front of me. I thought I had it. But anyway, they got they got a bunch of stuff announced, including a face to face profits with and, uh, Cody Rhodes. Yeah, they got some more tournament matches, and they got uh, Cody Rhodes and The Rock will have a face to face. What a waste! Or that's Roman, be. Roman, Rock is not going to be there. He's not advertised yet, at least. Waste of the profits in uh, AOP because you just you know that thing's going to end in a double disqualification or some sort of schmoz or something because they're going to be one of them on one of the nights at WrestleMania. I don't know how you don't do a six man match to blow this feud off and get the profits and Lashley. No offense to Cross and AOP, the hell away from them if you want to do something with them. Then for a collision, Danielson and Shibata was a fantastic match. Fantastic match. Brian pinned him with a cradle, and uh, you're just not going to get much better than that if you want grappling, striking, and uh, they largely stayed away from each other's heads, although there were two drop kicks, one from each, I think got him right in the face, but other than that, excellent, excellent match. Uh, other good stuff on the show included, I actually really liked the uh, Claudio Lance Archer match, despite fun. going to a DQ, hey, you got to do stuff. Hey, that, and that's it. That Setting was a, up a TV six man. match. I like some things like that once in a while. Do that sort of stuff once in a while. If you would have did that with an, the infantry over the last couple of weeks, the promo that they cut last week would have maybe had more gravity. Now, all of that went away with their match against the House of Black, but that's a different story. We had uh, the return of Kyle O'Reilly. He looked good. 
although he has serious atrophy of his right arm. He's kind of like Paul Orndorff now. But uh, he can still do everything. And a uh, good match, one with an arm bar. And then the uh, the main event was uh, an Adam Copeland promo. He's got a barbed wire board. And he cut a great promo challenging Christian, but he made an idiot rookie mistake, which is he screamed, I quit, into the mic. Oh, no. Never Ryan. do that. No. He even said he talked to Mick Foley and referenced a Mick Foley interview from the 90s, and he still made that rookie now, error. Explain to the people why if they don't know. Well, they had a very famous match with The Rock and Mankind in, like, 1999. It was an I quit match. And in the promos leading up to the match, Mick Foley said, I will never say I quit. And literally in Figure Four Weekly, I said, I know the finish of the pay-per-view. They're going to play a recording of Mick Foley saying I quit. And I'll be darned if that isn't exactly what they did. So if you're going to do an I quit match, you must never say I quit in promos leading up to the match. Now, we must talk about the worst thing on the show by leaps and bounds. And that is... Buddy Matthews and Malachi Black versus Carly Bravo and no, Sean Dean. No, put this on Malachi. I'm sorry, I, I, my notes are wrong. It was, uh, it was, it, it was, doesn't uh, matter. None of them seem like Brody. They want to be there. Brody King. Know. You know, there's all, there's been so much talk about how House of Black doesn't want to do jobs. Of course, they deny it. And here we are. We had a match where they need to do a job and get over another team in a tournament and an upset win. You absolutely could not have done it worse. They made them look like total Idiots. fools. They beat them and beat them and beat them and beat them. Sean Dean got a hot tag, was immediately killed. They beat him and beat him and beat him. They killed his partner. They killed him but lifted him up at two. And then Mark Briscoe threw a chair at Buddy, and, uh, and Sean Dean crawled over and pinned him. Brody pile drive one I mean, of them through the table or tried to. I mean, talk about everything they said to FTR falling flat, which also by extension just puts another one onto FTR. It was everything done wrong to get this team over. I and actually, listen, I couldn't believe this match. I actually couldn't believe it. No. No matter what people have said or heard or whatever, I could not believe it when I saw it no. because I couldn't book it worse. Like, if someone said, watch the match, but I want you to rebook it. We're going to do it again, but I want you to make these other guys look worse, but they still have to win. I actually couldn't. Hey. Unless it was like, I'll beat them for 40 minutes and then do the same finish. And if you were going to do a fluke finish like this, why'd you give them the promo time last week? Made no sense. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing? How are you doing? I'm excellent, Brene. I'm you excellent. Bet. Yep. Uh, very excited that you're able to join us here tonight. Congratulations on retaining the AEW World Championship in such an incredible match with Hangman Adam Page, Swerve Strickland. You guys beat the ever-loving hell out of each other. Should I ask you if you're even remotely surprised that you are still our champion tonight? Not at all. Um, you know, I've always made it a, a point to uh, you know tell the world what I'm going to do, and I think that I've delivered. Uh, on every uh, promise that I've made here in AEW, uh, tonight was no different. You know, obviously, Swerve and Hangman, two tremendous young competitors, but they just didn't have enough, and I'm just that much better. So here I am, the champion. All right, guys, the floor is open to you guys. Any uh, questions that you guys have for Samoa Joe? It's all you. Take the first one right here, Joe. Thank you for your time, Joe. My name is Jonathan McClarty from flagshipnews.com and militarynews.com. Uh, congratulations on your victory tonight. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, what do, you, what do you think, you know, with Hangman and Swerve beefing with each other for so long, do you think that served as a distraction to, to further help you to retain tonight? Well, you know, first off, I want to thank your readers for their service. Secondly, um, you know, it was a huge mistake by both those gentlemen. I mean, obviously, they have very, very bad blood between each other. So, you know, these uh, heated issues can often boil over into other parts of their life. Unfortunately, it boiled over tonight, which is the worst place for it to happen. So, I mean, if uh, those gentlemen want to stay uh, eyes locked on each other, they thought that the path to salvation was through uh, each other's blood. Well, unfortunately, it wasn't because uh, I made sure that did not happen tonight. So that's what I feel. Lyric Swinton, SNME Radio. So you talked earlier a couple of weeks ago about bringing back the ranking system as a way to get the best opponents for the AEW World Championship. Today we saw an amazing match, one that you were a part of, and also Will Ospreay and Takeshita. 
What are your thoughts on the growing strong talent pool in All Elite Wrestling and what it means to be world champion during this time with so much talent? I mean, it's indicative of what AEW has always stood for. You know, we go out, we find the best wrestlers in the world and we bring them together to find out who is the best wrestler in the world. Currently, that is me. But on my heels are some of the greatest grapplers to ever step foot in a ring. You know, when we have acquisitions, men like Will Ospreay, how can you not be excited about the future of this company? And, uh, you know, once again, we've set up a protocol. Will Osprey is new here. He's a fantastic, dynamic athlete, has had tremendous success everywhere he's been. But until he has that success here, I don't need to worry about him. Back at the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simbervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Raw tonight is noted. Becky Lynch, Nia Jax, last woman standing. We have WrestleMania 40 tag title ladder match qualifiers. New Day versus Otis and Akira Tozawa. <laughs> Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus Julius Creed and Brutus Creed. That's interesting. And Our truth in the Miz versus Indu Sheer. Veer and Sangha, who appear once every six months, run roughshod, and then vanish again. Tomorrow we've got uh, NXT with Roxanne versus Tatum. Some random member of the No Quarter Catch crew will defend the Heritage Cup against Riley Osborne. Two random members of the No Quarter Catch crew will face Axiom and Nathan Frazier. Why is this happening? And Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson versus Hank and Tank. It's a stupid rule. I it's know. nonsensical. It doesn't make any it's sense. Dumb. It's dumb. And then for Dynamite, we have got Christian versus Adam Copeland. I quit for the TNT title. Eddie Kingston versus Okada for the Continental title. Deanna and Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm and Mariah May. Jericho versus Hook. And we will hear from Mercedes Monet. So, yes, uh, Eddie Kingston probably losing that title to Okada. So we're adding another belt to Dynamite. And then he's probably losing the Ring of Honor title to Mark Briscoe, which I believe that match is taking place. Isn't that the, the anniversary of... It might not be. I forget, but uh, I don't. I don't picture Mark Briscoe losing that. So Mark's going to be getting another title. So uh, hey, if you're so. a fan of belts, I got a promotion for you. All Elite Wrestling. We're going to wrap it up later on tonight. Back with Dave. No filthy show today. We're going to try and reschedule. I will be gone this afternoon, but uh, we'll figure that out sooner rather than later. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, up in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.